Good morning, guys. Uh, I don't know how long this stream will be. It shouldn't be too long because I haven't quite figured out how, uh, how much time I have to put to video and then it actually go up, which is why you have one, two, and three of the story time. Uh, <clears throat> plans for the day. Um, which is not what I want to talk about today. But, um, plans for the day. Um, go and buy dog food. I need to go by the Social Security office and see what I need to do about you know, taking care of my husband's stuff. And then, uh, I need to, uh, go talk to a man about a job. One that I can handle. I've been on disability for several years. Um, and in the state of Louisiana, at least, you can make a little bit, not much, and stay on disability, but um, it'll be, him and I talked about it, and I did explain to him my disability, and he said that he thinks that I can do that. Now... I will go talk to him. I will give him a free sample of what I can do. And then, uh, if it works out, it works out. That's great. Um, dog food, because I inherited my daughter's dog, whether I wanted to or not. She moved out of her apartment and moved into a place that she couldn't take her dogs. And so, I inherited them. Not happy about all that, but it is what it is. They are gorgeous dogs. Um, and rather than her getting rid of them, and rehoming them, I went ahead and took them because eventually she will get a place where she can have them back. <clears throat> if they decide to go back with her, you know, animals uh, kind of sort of um, attach to certain people which they do love her I'm not gonna lie they do love her um no makeup won't be done every single time but I'm trying to get ready to go do that um what I did want to talk about was grief and Grief in the sense of not death, but grief in the sense of um, living with an addict and the things you go through with that. That being said, it's not too far off from grief from death. Especially if the person, in my case, the person was sober, everything was great, we have a wonderful relationship, he backslid and fell off the wagon, and then the grief, the guilt, and everything that goes with it, you actually go through grief 
just like you would are some of what you would in a debt. And I realized this last night for the simple fact that um, I'm going through grief right now. I don't mean to cry. If I do, excuse me. Um, it's only been a month since his death. And when I can, I will tell you about that. But right now, we're talking about grief and guilt and the stages that you go through um, with that. I uh, actually talked to a family member or called a family member. She hasn't respond, responded to me yet. Um, about not only speaking on the family member that's going through it, but on the perspective of the addict. Um... Her name will never be used. I will never, ever let y'all know who she is. Um, that's her privacy. That's her story to tell. And I'm not, I, I'm, I, I may, if she allows it, I will um, tell you her perspective and her side of it. Because like I said, it's a disease. It's not something they always can control. And a lot of it is because of, uh, A lot of it is because they um, have gone through trauma in their life. And trauma beyond their control. I mean, it is what it is. I have had trauma throughout my life. And we'll talk about that one day. But just to let you know that not always do you need to blame the addict for being the addict. As far as the grief is concerned, in my instance, my husband was amazing. 17 years sober before he went through that. And I went through the guilt. I went through the anger that comes with grief. I went through the denial. I went through the praying to God and I went through um, the bargaining, which is all a part of grief and the stages of grief. Um, so if that's what you're going through, I do want you to know that it's a normal thing. It's something that we have to deal with. It's not your fault. You will think that it's your fault. Or you will blame yourself. Um... That being said, nothing is ever your fault as far as them falling back into that. Um, wrong one.
Another wrong one. <coughs> I'm about to just do whichever. We'll try this. Uh, anyway, don't blame yourself. It's nothing you did to uh, cause that. Uh, eh, like I said, I went through the, it was my fault. And it's not. Um, my husband told me a million times. I did it. Because I was in a spot or I chose to do it. Whichever, okay? Um, but he never blamed me, although I blamed myself. The bargaining. God, if you will fix him, if you will help him see the light, that happens as well. I do know that I have a family member, not my husband, that um, was an addict. And I prayed daily, on my knees, crying for him to get sober. And he did. It took a while took a while of praying for him. It took a while of begging God to please help him through his addiction. That being said, like I said, family member and that's hereditary. It's also a disease. Um, it was actually somebody I never would have believed that did uh, or would be an addict because in their youth, they actually was like, yeah, um, seeing addicts in our family, he was pretty much like their piece of trash, which as a youth, that's how they see that. Um, do I think that an addict is a piece of trash? Of course not, because I saw it with him. He wasn't a piece of trash. He loved people. He would help people. But he had the addiction that went with it. Um, my husband would do anything for anybody. Do anything for anybody. And that being said, it did not stop the addiction. He would, and like I said, we're going to go over the help that he gave. Um, it's just not going to be today. Um, but don't feel guilty. And do not feel responsible for their addiction. Their addiction is their addiction and it's not on you. 
it's basically on them to get clean, to want to get clean, and unfortunately, they have to hit rock bottom. And that being said, sometimes rock bottom is good. Unless that rock bottom leads to death, then they can't repent and they can't come back from it. I have seen way too much and I have gone through way too much because I always tried to fix that person. You cannot fix that person. That person has to fix themselves. Um, and one day they may. All you can do is pray for them. Talk to them. And once you've prayed for them, then you might get results when you want to. But everything happens in God's time. So praying and praying and praying and praying doesn't hurt. What I want you to know is that the guilt that you feel or the grief that you feel is natural. It's normal. Especially when you have somebody that is 100% living a right life versus like let's say for instance the doctor gives them pain medicine and they become addicted that way or they were an addict prior to and then when you have uh, something happen they go back to it it's not for you to fix it, you can try to help, which with me, I did, you know, everything I could and it didn't help until that person wanted to get clean, until that person decided that this is my life and this is not a life that I like. Once they look in the mirror they say, okay, I'm done with this. Let me seek treatment. Um, I'll tell you the story of how and when that happens, but, you know, you can't force that. You have to actually wait for them to decide that, you know, I want to get clean. I'm tired of living this way. <sighs> oh, by the way, if y'all see this up here, um, before my husband died, we had a leak we didn't know about until the roof caved in. Once the roof caved in, he got up on the roof. He fixed that part so it would stop. But before he could redo the sheetrock, he passed. And, you know, as of right now, living on a fixed income, I don't have the means to do that. So, 
before I hear ye, your house is, needs to be fixed, this, that, and then the other. That's what that is. Um... God bless y'all. And if you need to grieve, grieve. Um, at least with grief, with a family member who is going through addiction and trying to take care of an addicted person, uh, you still have hope. Um, somebody who has passed, you know, a hundred percent, they're not coming back. And so, that grief may last a little longer. Grief is grief. And what I'm going to tell you is seek counseling. Um, for the simple fact, you cannot change anything. It is okay to go through that. But... Until that person gets ready to change it. There's nothing you can do. You can beg. You can plead. You can do whatever. And all they'll end up doing is hiding their addiction. Whether it be they're not at home. They're at work. They do their stuff. They come home. Like, my husband would do his stuff as he was away from the house and sober up and then come home. But there's an anger that goes with that because their, f lack of a better term, faming for what they're addicted to. And it became extremely, extremely um, difficult. So, anger and all that, it's a big part of it. The... Uh, person that's going through it doesn't understand. He seems clean. He doesn't seem like he's using. And why is he so mad when he comes in? Well, a lot of times that's the reason. A lot of times. I can't tell you that's every single time and... I can't tell you that it doesn't get worse. But like I said, pray for that person's salvation and um, realization that they need to get clean. I won't be doing makeup every single time, nine out of time, ten times, you're going to see me uh, with the messy bun and no makeup. I rarely put makeup on, but since I have errands to run today, we're doing that. If there are any questions or any stories, let me know. The uh,
how do I word this? The grief is real. During this time. Yes, it is similar but different from grief from a death. Um, and I know that because I've gone through both. But you do have hope. And when that person asks for help, help. When that person has decided that it's time to get clean, you know, give them options. There's Al-Anon, there's uh, the one with narcotics, uh, I'm not sure. And then there's counselors that you can use. There's, um, you know, putting them in a rehab type situation. And, uh, I don't have these listed below. I know that there are um, Narcotics Anonymous, I think it was the one I was looking for a while ago. But um, they um, are all in the phone book. And eventually, once I figure out how this works, I will list those. So that y'all will know the numbers to call. All the AA, um, numbers sh should be in the book. And it should be up at the top when you look up AA or, you know, I say phone book because most of the time people don't have phone books. They have uh, Google that they look up numbers with. I know this makeup is a mess. I will fix it. Um, and Everything, all the numbers you want, you need to know to help that person once that person asks for help are listed. I will list them when it's time or when I figure this out. But you are going to have to wait, and no matter what you do, until they decide that, hey, I want help, you're not getting anywhere. They have to choose for themselves.